I'm John Schmidt of SCTV, and uh, this my guest today is Mark Stevenson, who is an artist who has his work on display in the assembly room here at the Senior Center. And we've invited Mark in today to talk a little bit about his art and anything else he wants to talk about. But I guess I, the first question I might ask is, how did you get started doing art? And people of of a certain age are interested about when you got started, you know, if you did it all your life or if you got got started at a certain point. Oh, I, I kind of have always done it, um, but got serious in college. Um, I liked theater too, and uh, my first year at, at university I couldn't decide which direction to go, but everybody in the theater department was crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went for a different kind of crazy in the art department. But I, you know, I, I liked doing art as a little kid, so. so. So for someone who's never seen any of your art and you have to describe it, how would you, how would you start to describe it? Um, well, this shows pretty bright colors, uh, but abstract. Uh, I don't think there's, there's a, a a style really. I mean, I try all different kinds of things. I might work on a series of 10 doing something and then switch to something else, but it's all abstract and over the years I've done a lot of collage and assemblage, um, things like that. So did you did you arrive at abstract after after trying a bunch of different things or did it just, is that what spoke to you right from the start? No, I you know I had training in drawing and painting and um, uh, it just seemed to me that n nature does it better. I mean, why why draw a tree when we have beautiful trees everywhere? I mean, why not make something you can't we don't see or or that's new and different? So that's how I look at it. And I, I think uh, representational art for me is so limiting. It's, uh, where if it's abstract the viewer brings something to it and they, uh, they're half of it, yeah. It might not necessarily be what I was thinking about or, or working at, but it, you know, it frees them up, I think. Uh -huh. Which a lot of people are intimidated by that. They want to they wanna know what they're looking at. And my answer to that is, well, you're looking at a painting. <laughs> so. I was very surprised as a young person to go and see Picasso's other works when he, before he got so abstract or got abstract at all that he was able to do all these great uh, portraits. And he, he, uh, but then he stopped doing that kind of art. And, and uh, well, it, it used to be. I mean that. Artists were classically trained. I mean, I don't think that even happens anymore. They they aren't taught how to draw or helped with to learn how to paint. Um, I mean, when I took painting, it was like you were just sent in a room and said, "Do it." They didn't tell you anything. I mean, we didn't have any instruction. It was we'd have critiques, but uh, we were supposed to just learn on our own. So. What is your experience with the classroom and, and like your fellow students? I mean, they have classes here uh, in watercolor and, and uh, oil painting. And, and for me, it's a little hard to imagine what a, what a class is like because I, the only classes I had were like with grade school kids or, you know, where they were kind of, kind of playtime. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that it, do do you do you find a group groups give you as uh, any? I don't take classes feedback. anymore. I mean, I, I'm just not interested. I, I mean, I'm, I'm very self motivated. I have a uh -huh. studio at my house, and um, I I don't know. I don't feel like I would enjoy being in a class unless it was something very specific, like some technique I'd never tried, and uh, I wanted to learn how you start. Um, but um, I've started writing poetry is a new thing for me and that I'm, I've been in a class here um, studying po appreciating poetry and that's been great
because I didn't know anything about it. What do you think a person needs to do to, to needs to have or uh, capabilities or or uh, to to start in art? Do you think that do you, do you have a theory about every man in art, or does every can everyone put something down on? paper and have it be oh yeah worthwhile I mean, to me it's just about motivation and um, the, the need to do it I mean uh, I don't think you need to know how to to represent things or, or you know paint pictures of things or um, yeah I what is the re relationship between the art you create and the art you like to look at? Is it, are you, are you? I like you all kinds, just like music. I think, um, I mean, I appreciate what other people do. It's just that I don't want to do what they want to do, or, um, you know, I, I, I love to look at art and museums and everywhere. I guess it's everywhere. <laughs> How much are we supposed to learn about you from looking at your art? Do you, th do oh. you look at it that way, or no? <laughs> no, They're... no, I, I don't. Um, I mean, I guess I don't think about that. Do people give you interpretations of your art, and and you have to say sometimes? Yeah. Do, do you find it illuminating, or uh, is it sometimes? <laughs> I had a show a couple of years ago, and, and these paintings were basically dots, you know, like on a canvas, just a painted dot. And I had them hanging in this hallway where the gallery was. So there were paintings on both sides of the hall. And this high school girl came up to me, and she said, I get it. It's like a bullet went from that side to that side. I mean, I hadn't even thought of that. And I, and I love that kind of thing, you know, someone else's interpretation or... Uh, Observation. That's that's pretty. <laughs> I can't imagine I, you sitting out thinking. Are, we're such pattern recognizers. And yeah, we want to. So, it makes you feel yeah. safe if you can put things in a place that you know. If you had to, uh, like, if you didn't have a studio, would you would you think? Uh, I mean, you obviously like working in, in, in your studio, but would you, you think you'd create art on the street or, you know, if you'd, you'd paint uh, um, murals on the walls or some stuff like that? Oh, you'd, I'd be doing something. I mean, uh, I've never liked the boundaries between the arts, uh, where there's fine arts and decorative arts, for example. To me, they're everything... I see is it can be artful, um, and you know it's, it's very recent that I have a studio. I mean, all my younger years, you know, you'd have a corner in a bedroom or um, a basement or just anywhere you could find to do something. Um, so it's it's a luxury now to have a room just specifically to do art. Do you tell people? Uh like, are you a proselytizer for, for creating art? Do you say that people, if they, you know, if they, if they tried to tried to make art, that they would get some kind of a benefit out of out of out of it? I mean, I, I know there's, I've had this with people who are are writers, and they think that everyone should be writing down their their no, their I don't, thoughts. I don't or, think anything works for everyone. I mean, uh -huh. if they if they they have an attraction to it, yeah, I'd encourage them, but not everyone. I mean, we're also different, you know, we find different ways to get through and, and uh, to make ourselves feel comfortable. Um, so. <laughs> what are you working on these days? <laughs> Nothing. Um, since I put this show up, I haven't worked, done any visual stuff, but so does like I said, poetry is kind of taken over, and so my creative energy. I get up at four most days, and have coffee. And nowadays, I'm writing poetry, and pretty much every day. I mean, during the winter months, I'm more likely to do visual art, um, and I get out there early and start doing stuff. 
So, so you, do you find when you when you put a show up, does it it just takes enough other types of energy that it sort of Right, it's kind of like a, a build up and a, you know you have a goal and you do it and then you take a break or I do um, like putting on a show or something uh, like a theater show maybe you know. and then it, my creative juices or whatever they're called you know are taking a break and there's part of my brain that's that I'm not aware of that's work getting ready to come up and approach something approach it differently you know. Do you st ever start on a poem and realize it's a painting, or vice, <laughs> or vice sort versa? Sort of, yeah, sometimes. I mean, there's the overlap. What I'm amazed at is how similar the creative process is. I mean, for me, I mean, I approach visual art a lot of times inspired by materials, and, um, you know, I just start playing with maybe a color of paint I haven't used before and play with it. And poetry, what I've been doing, it's very similar. I sit and just let my brain come up with words or thoughts and start writing things down and then pick from that and maybe develop something or maybe not. So, um, the difference is the, the poetry's uh, um, I do more uh, recrafting I guess where you know editing and changing and with the, the artwork for me my goal is kind of the opposite. Yeah. The visual stuff, like right now, I'm really interested in direct expression, is what I call it, where I just make a mark and don't touch it. You know, it's like it just came out of me, and then study that, and then maybe, maybe make another mark that's in response to that. Or, but I found that things get muddy, if, you know, if, and I think everything, like each movement or stroke or mark is pure, you know, and so that's kind of what I've been playing with, like in this show. Um, did, you, did you ever feel like, oh, I went too far? Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, you know, I know when something doesn't work for me, and uh, that's the same in poetry and painting, too. You know, it's like uh, you get away from it, and then you look at it a couple weeks later or read it, and you're like, this is horrible. So... Well, like in this show, those those wooden collages are, they were paintings, you know, like this with stretch canvas on stretchers, and I hated the paintings, and so I took all the canvas off and thought, well, you know, I'll build something on the stretchers, and so then I just started gluing pieces of wood on them. Um, but, yeah, I end up with a lot of paintings uh, that some, some I don't like. <laughs> I had a friend who was a painter, and he started writing, and he, he mentioned the cost was a factor, that it was so much <laughs> less expensive to, to write, and I, that sort of blew my mind, because I thought, you know, this guy is talented in two areas, and I... I well, I, for me, it's space. You know, I, I could have a stack of poems printed out, as opposed to a room just full of stored paintings. Yeah, so it's more about space than anything. Um, Do you, people ask you how to get started painting? What what does a person need to start painting? Do they just need paper and and something? You don't need anything. You know, just something. If you want to make something two dimensional, I suppose you need some kind of paper, or you'd use newspaper or <laughs> something to make a mark, or scissors to cut it up, and some glue. You know. A number of people paint on boards, right? And then uh, on. Uh, yeah, you could paint on masonry, masonry or canvas yeah. or uh, walls. <laughs> Again, this is kind of a generic question, but do you have like a, a hero or, a, or in your case, do you have a hero in, in poetry and a hero in, in painting that you kind of look at what they did and think? I don't know. Oh, uh, I that was yeah. I have a lot of them, I mean, especially in in visual art. I mean, I love Matisse. Uh, I mean, I I love uh, Hockney, who's I mean, to me it's so impressive how he just keeps trying new things, and he's I think he's in his eighties now, um, and his like that whole period where he was collaging uh, Polaroid images. Uh, 
and now he's doing a lot with uh, drawing with a stylus on his phone, you know, like uh, he try he'll try anything, and, and some of it works great, and some of it doesn't. But I, I admire him a lot. Poetry, it's all pretty new for me. I mean, I've been exposed to a lot in the last few months uh, here, um, um, and I like a lot of it. A lot of it I don't. My, my big thing with poetry is that, it, and this is just personal, but I, I feel like it has to be accessible. If it's a lot of work and you have to sit and study it to figure out what the poet's talking about, I'm not interested. So, um, and I love words. Does that draw you to short forms like haiku or something? I like love that? haiku, yeah, yeah. Because to me, it's the essence. I mean, they, they distill it down to just a few words to give you a picture of something and um, maybe something happening, maybe not. But yeah, some of the stuff I write is kind of haiku like. Um, so that's probably one of my. Do you want to talk about any of the individual works that you have downstairs or anything like that? Well, let's see. What's down there? <laughs> um, well, I talked about the wooden collages a little bit, and that's, that's the newest stuff I've done. Um, but the, the big bright paintings um, came before that, and this is after I painted for about five years with, with, with just one color of paint, and it was Prussian blue. And uh, it was really a great experience. I mean, it, when it comes out of the tube, it looks almost black. But then when you thin it out, it's this beautiful blue. And you add white to it, and it gets into a light blue. <laughs> and, um, um, but I just came out of that finally and started using color. And then I went in the other direction and uh, want to try every color. And I think I learned a lot from how to apply paint. And, play with it during those years. Um, mm -hmm. Why do people do art? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's not for money. I, would, I remember being an undergraduate and thinking, knowing that I wasn't going to find work doing art. I mean, unless I became a professor. And uh, I didn't really want to do that, but I just kept doing it anyway. Um, I mean, it's very hard to market art, visual art, uh, poetry too, from what I hear. <laughs> um, and y you not only have to, you know, produce the art, ship the art, insure the art, photograph the art, sell the art, and then, you know, a dealer would take 50%. So why would anybody do it? <laughs> I mean, there's, unless, uh, I mean, there's very, very few people who make a living doing art. Um, that's what I would tell young people. Don't go into art. <laughs> but they still will. Yeah. And they still do. They do it, but I mean, don't think you're going to survive on it. Uh, have you seen, seen much of the art that pe people have created in, the, like in, uh, uh, in their later years? Mm -hmm. to, to me, there's all kinds of art. I mean, some of it... Uh, uh, is really interesting, and some of it isn't. Um, I had a good friend who was schizophrenic who painted every day, um, and he would be probably considered an outsider. Um, I think he actually took some classes here from somebody, but uh, but his work was so outside that it's very interesting to me uh, because he lo he looked at the world so differently um, and was able to paint pictures about it. And, um, so I, th I think an anybody who, who wants to do it just needs to do it and do, keep doing it. I mean, whether or not anything happens with it, uh, it's, it's a good thing. I, maybe this is out of bounds, but one of the things I know that you have run a store in Iowa City at, at some, true, yeah. some point. Did you, I mean, did you find that, was there an element of, there was an element of art into it? I mean, I oh, would yeah. say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it really, it, it, it worked for me for years. I mean, it took in all my interests, um, like history of design, um, art, uh, uh, 
socializing. Um, I liked uh, presenting. I, I had this theory in, in business. I don't know if I made it up or somebody else did, but that it was the three P's. <laughs> it was product, price, presentation, and sometimes personality. <laughs> and I, I really think it's true. You know, like, I mean, I, uh, I had fun doing it, but it, just, it got to the point where that was enough. And I wanted to do this, what I'm doing now, um, just so I can get up every day and do things for me rather than present for other people. Uh -huh. so, yeah, and, and I love objects and want to know what they're made of, why they were made, how they were made, how it all fits into history. and um, So it was a good thing. How long did you do that? Um, I had a couple of shops, I, I guess about 20 years. Again, this may be somewhat out of bounds, but I, we have uh -oh. a mutual friend in Bob, Bob Beal, and I, I, I know that his uh, t-shirts are, are also on display. Do you, and he, he, was, he had stuff in your, uh, in your shops. Yeah, yeah. At, he, we used time. to sell his t-shirts, yeah. Did you see a sort of a artistic bent in, in Bob's T-shirts that were kind of that? Uh, oh yeah, I mean I I, I loved what he's doing. Um, th they're really complex. I mean these these T-shirts started out really simple. Like I think he actually well he did the first one for that that jester for the SSRO show, but then he I oh, asked is that, him is that what got him going? Yeah oh yeah he'll tell you all about. It. <laughs> But then I had him do a sweatshirt. It had a Hawkeye, Herky the Hawk on it, and I didn't want to wear that, so he cut it out. Really simple. He just put a shape in there. But these ones he's doing now, I mean, it's, a, it's very complicated to figure out those curves and fit all those pieces together, especially because it's knit. I don't know if you've ever sewn, but uh, it's not easy. And over the years, we sold uh, other kinds of things like that, like somebody would come up with something and, and we'd try selling it and see if people were interested. So it was mostly antiques and used stuff, but we'd also include, um, like I, I would go to Mexico and bring back Mexican arts and crafts stuff. Um, just anything that kind of struck my fancy. You had some things with flag, or with the uh, Iowa map motifs and yeah, things like that. Yeah, I designed that. those those t-shirts. Yeah. Is there anything else in the show right now that you just want to speak to? Probably the the two big ones, you know, the, the I wish I could be doing that, you know. Well, people say, "Well, why aren't you?" It's, well, because they take up so much room for one thing, and I just happened onto those uh, boards ready to go, so I used them. Um, but it was very freeing to work that big. So I might go in that direction. In terms of marketing, do you, do you welcome people who just ask you about, you know, if you, they could come and look at some of your paintings or do you, how do you, well, or sure. do you have different ways of? <laughs> of, of I'm, not, I'm not very good at any of that. Uh -huh. you know? I mean, yeah, people come and come to my studio, but um, um, I, I don't have a gallery, I don't push it. It's just, if it happens, it happens. Um, I, mean, I think when I was young, I, I was going that path, I was in competitive shows, and um, took it all really seriously, and um, then the work got kind of locked up, I mean, because I was, I didn't, I didn't like that whole game, so. Um, I don't do it. I'll take a minute here to thank Mark for coming in and answering our questions, whether they were good, bad, or indifferent. And, oh, they were uh, good questions, I thought. So thanks again, Mark. Well, thank you for having me. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> let, me, let me do what one more. Do you have more. to warm it up He's or something? He's taking them, too. <laughs> He's no, doing sorry. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, that one turned out. Okay. You got it? Thank you. Thank you.
No, I think it's already 